Day is the story of Alfred Day. Um, he's a tail gunner in a Lancaster bomber. He's gone back to be a an extra, a POW in a POW movie. Um, he was a POW, and because of being on the film set, he kind of goes back through his life to his childhood, but particularly the period when he was operational, when he was with his crew, when he fell in love, when he was most alive. He's basically got post-traumatic stress, or he's bomb happy, or shell shock, or whatever uh, you want to call it. Um, so lots of things he doesn't want to remember. He doesn't want to remember most of uh, being in an air crew. Uh, doesn't want to remember everybody he knows um, dying. Uh, doesn't want to remember his horrible childhood, um, death of his mother, um, bad incidents with his father. Um, doesn't want to remember losing the woman that he falls in love with during the war. Um, but obviously, because it's a book by me, he does. I've been interested for a long time in, in, in bombing and in the idea of bombing a civilian population to, to win a war. And the idea that civilian populations can be bombed into submission, this natural assumption that they're cowards and will run away. I wanted to look at how you're affected by, by, by killing in that particular way where you don't see what you kill, where it, it becomes quite theoretical. And I, I read a, a magazine article about the filming of a, of, a, of a war movie in 49, where people who, a POW escape movie, where people who had been POWs went back and played extras. And I didn't know why you would do that, why you would go back to possibly a very traumatic time in your life and reenact it as, as fantasy. <laughs> spent three and a half years looking at objects, looking at clothes, uh, going to museums. It's somewhere like this where there are some original buildings and you can kind of really narrow your focus down and pretend that you're somewhere. You're just trying to layer things up and build things and make a context and sort of have some successful experience of time travel. Alf is a tail gunner, percentage-wise, probably most likely person to get killed. If your crew survived, you, you probably wouldn't because the fighters would tend to attack from the rear and take you out. My grandfather always said he wanted to be a tail gunner in Lancaster, specifically because you're the most likely to get killed. Um, we have lots of family traits that are unhealthy. It is kind of beautiful. Uh, just slightly too big. It's like all of these things. You're just putting human beings into things that are slightly too big and that will hurt. Although it, it does feel quite cosy, and, and people did talk about how, you know, at a certain level, it's home, and it is what is defending you. And it would get, you know, it would fly on one engine, which is amazing. It would fly on one engine full of holes, and kind of limp home. It's, it's uh, amazingly well designed. People under stress develop rituals and defences, and they try and produce power in a situation where, where, where they're essentially powerless. In the book, they have this ritual where they play I'll See You In My Dreams, which has quite appropriate lyrics. I'll see you in There's a sense that if they, if, they, if they hear the record all the way through, they'll have nothing to come back to, whereas if they play half the tune, they have to come back because they have to hear the rest of the tune, and it kind of makes them feel that they were interrupted. People do weird things when they're under pressure.